What's up everybody? Welcome back to another classic WoW hype video. Good evening, good morning. I don't know where you're coming from, but I'm glad you're here. Guys, classic is coming soon. It's on the way. It's just around the corner. I can feel it in my bones. Um, and today, in this classic WoW hype video, I want to talk about four PvP items that are going to give you an edge against your opponent. Now, in vanilla, we know that itemization is everything, right? Consumables, they set you apart from the rest of the crowd. Now, these items that we're going to look at today are really going to give you a big advantage. We have three consumables and then one equip ability, one equip item, like we have a chest piece. So, we got a lot of things to cover. Now, in this first item I want to cover, we have the green whelp armor. Now, this is really unique. Guys, hit this like button and comment down below real quick if you haven't ever seen this item or heard about it. I mean, I I've played my fair share of vanilla, but this is one thing that's been new to me. So check it out. It's a bind on equip green plus 11 spirit leather armor in the equip ability when struck by a melee attacker, that attacker has a 5% chance of being put to sleep for 10 seconds. Only affects enemies level 50 and below. Cooldown 10 seconds. So there's a lot going on here. Guys, this green whelp armor, this is a leather working craft. Um, it's a, The recipe is a world drop recipe, and it, it doesn't drop off any specific mob. Um, I'll show you the loot table here. As you can see, it's just a random shot. So, if you get your hands on this thing, I'm going to tell you why you can make a ton of gold. Now, this item has a lot of history to it. So, whenever it first got introduced, that's what this middle green whelp armor is right here. Look at the equipability on this middle one. When struck by a melee attacker, that attacker has a 5% chance of being put to sleep for 30 seconds. Now notice, it was 30 seconds instead of 10 originally, and it affected anybody, um, not just enemies below level 50, which is huge. Huge, guys. Can you, can you see the scenarios with this? And then in patch 1.10, um, I guess people were abusing it, or Blizzard got smart because... You know, as we're going to see, as we're going to discuss it, you're going to see how powerful this item was. But in 1.10, it got changed to 10 seconds and only affects enemies level 50 and below. Now, there is one thing that I want to point out. I'm not positive on its usability and how effective it is. But if you notice in the 1.10 one that I pulled from this website, it doesn't have the cooldown of 10 seconds. Um, but in the PTR that I used it on, as you can see here... I actually got two enemies to go to sleep at the same time so there's still a little bit of mystery as to how this item could best get utilized but I want to paint you guys a picture a couple different scenarios of how I would imagine using this thing so let's go PvE for instance the level 30 to 50 dungeon bracket guys is this not the best tanking chess piece and first of all <laughs> when was the last time tanks used this in dungeon runs now this could change the entire meta, especially if you're doing like speed runs, you know, some of those things that I might be interested in. All of a sudden you go from pulling three to four melee mobs all the way up to six, uh, only if you can stun more than one at a time. But just imagine the possibilities. You could even go as far to equip your DPS with this chest piece on, get some off tank gameplay going on. Um, that would be really neat. This would take a higher level skill cap, a higher level of play to pull this off, um, and the coordination so that you don't wake up the stun people, but That's just one instance that I could imagine using this thing now. Let's go PvP So world PvP first say you're in Stranglethorn Vale You have your main character who found this rare recipe and your alt just hit level 30 and you send them that chest piece right away So who can use this chest piece? It's it's leather with plus 11 spirit. We got druids rogues hunters and shamans and screw it, let's do paladins and warriors for that matter. This equip ability is that good. So you're questing through Stranglethorn Vale, you know, of course you just killed a mob, you're at 25 to 50% health, and a warrior comes and charges in on you. Well, all of a sudden he gets stunned on his first ability, you're off scot-free. That was huge. Now let's go to Battlegrounds. Take for instance, Warsong Gulch, right? You're a druid, you're running through, you've got the flag, and you're running through the middle of the map, you're almost there, of course, a rogue is stealthed waiting for you, and he opens up on you, all of a sudden, donezo. Um, got put to sleep, you run to the room, you cap the flag, and you win the game because of this chess piece. Now picture yourself in a Wrathy Basin, you're guarding the base, you're guarding the flag, and a rogue comes up, starts his opener on you, he stuns you, but his first stun ends up putting him to sleep, you're a druid, um, you re-stealth, he doesn't get his opener on you, all of a sudden you've got the advantage because of this chess piece. 
Like, is this chess piece not best in slot for twinks from 30 to 50? Especially with all the rogues and this is huge against hunters. Hunter pets end up just meleeing you down to death. And this chess piece puts the hunter pets to sleep. So I got one more perspective I want to take with this item. This is more of like a role playing feel good kind of view. But this green whelp armor is crafted with four green whelp scales. And these scales are only found off of two different mobs in the game. The adolescent whelps and the dreaming whelps found in the swamp of sorrows. As soon as you walk in from Deadwind Pass, they're just off to the right in a little zone. There's 12 of these whelps up at a time and they're only dropping their scales at 20%. So it's not a for sure thing. I mean, you gotta camp these whelps for a while um, in order to get the amount of materials needed for this armor. But these scales only create three things in game. This armor, some green bracers that just have normal stats, and then the enchanting recipe that adds plus five skinning to your gloves. Now, you need more than 300 of a skinning skill in order to skin the beast inside Molten Core, and more importantly, um, in Nixia's lair, you, ne you need to skin a Nixia with like a 310, 315 skinning skill in order to get the reagents, in order to get the items to craft powerful in-game items. So, these green whelp scales are associated with the mysterious green whelps and Swamp of Sorrows and Sunken Temple, you know, just this powerful, mysterious zone and they're also needed for the green whelp armor. I think that's a testament to how powerful, and it's a world drop recipe at that. Like, the developers knew this was a gem in the game. One last point on this item and then we're moving on. I think it's worth mentioning, this is a good, possibly could be a farming spot, a good place to camp your alt, right? And I think we should start considering these things whenever we're planning out, you know, our classic wild experience. These are just things to think about. This is the only place you can find green whelp scales off of 12 different mobs. So you could own the market for it. Granted, it's only used for three different abilities, but especially if your alt has skinning, there's a ton of beasts in Swamp of Sorrows. If you need the skins from levels 33 to 40 mobs, it's something to consider. Also, people have been wheeling and dealing since day one. Let's go to the forums. We got to point this out. Brown Star, he did everybody... <laughs> He did everybody a favor in pointing this out. He said, just thought I'd point out that Nelly Ravencrest has made the same comment on various low-level random drop recipes across a number of professions. Now, while it's possible she may be trying to complete every profession, my spidey sensors are telling me this may be a cheeky marketing ploy to hyperinflate values. <laughs> and if you look at the bottom, Nelly Ravencrest post said, such a low drop rate. I would be paying up to 5,000 gold for it on my server to complete my collection. If you find this one on the auction house below that, you might want to grab it since it can be a year until you see one again. <sighs> That's good stuff. Second up on our list, we got the large rope net. Now, you may have seen this item discussed and displayed in other videos, but since we've gotten some new news on how Classic's going to be released with 1.12 itemization, we got to talk about this item. So, what is the large rope net? For starters, it's one of the most overpowered, useful PvP items in the game. I mean, it's another one of those items that just puts you ahead of the curve if you've got this in your repertoire, right? So the large rope net, it requires level two to use, it's bind on pickup, and its use ability renders a target unable to move for 10 seconds on a one minute cooldown. Now even better, this is farmed off of the Murlocs found on the west coast in Westfall at 5%. So you can imagine somebody, you know, waiting for queues in between battlegrounds, if the queues are that long, because we're going back to vanilla and you had to go to those battleground masters, um, they'd farm these things up and you combine that with magic dust dude found in Westfall off the dust devils that we looked at earlier in, in our first classic hype video the combination of these two things dude the alliance must have been tearing the horde up in battlegrounds and blizzard sometime between patch 1.5 and 1.12 I couldn't find the official patch notes but it's evident that this item was removed in vanilla because it was too powerful. So once this item was removed, Blizzard actually let all the people that still had large rope nets in their inventory keep them, but they turned it, it used to not always be a bind on pickup item, which is, you know, just makes it all that much more powerful. So I guess you could have sold this thing on the auction house or the horde, they still could have farmed it, but it's in Westfall and it's not easily accessible to get to Westfall for the horde. So much so that the dead mines is pretty much strictly an Alliance only quest. So for all you Alliance that, you know, got your panties up in a bunch, mad that the Alliance doesn't have a horde equivalent to our next item, the really sticky glue, you know, just shut it, right? <laughs> 
the faction imbalance the faction war is real right now boys we're coming classic is coming baby but the fourth item on the list i want to talk about is the really sticky glue now this is a bind on pickup item and it's a quest reward you get 10 of these guys in your character's lifetime you can only get up to 10 items at once its use ability renders a target unable to move for up to 10 seconds the cooldown is one minute exactly like the large rope net guys so while the alliance doesn't get their large rope nets for all my horde players out there guys you got 10 of these in your character's lifetime it's a quest reward that's bind on pickup use these things wisely now where would you use some of these items of course you could use it in pvp and that's where most people are going to say but guys this is such a rare gem this is so unique i'd make sure that you save it for a highlight reel preferably i'm probably going to save it for some pve experience because you only get 10 of them i don't want to waste it on somebody in a battleground um, I want to do some crazy, crazy game mechanic that I'm trying to pull off, and I'm in a sticky situation, I'll pull out my really sticky glue. That's all we got for this video, guys. That was three, four new PvP items that we discussed in this video that are going to give you a huge edge against your opponent come Classic. I hope this video scratched your Classic WoW itch until the game comes out this summer, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. It's your boy, Grace for days. <laughs> Howdy.